Welcome back in, my beautiful builders, to another episode of Vault Hunters. And today, we're once again picking up right here in a vault where I am hopefully going to get some living chests today. That's the goal, anyway. I really need some more living chests so that we can get some knowledge essence to unlock our next mod being Create. Hopefully, at least. <laughs> I really want to unlock Create today, so... I'm going to run some mods, or not mods, I'm going to run some vaults today and hopefully get enough to where we can unlock. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is two living. This is two living uh, POIs back to back. Oh, it's going to be a good day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Even more living. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh, man. Even more living chests. What is up with this room, man? <laughs> this room is just absolutely loaded with living chests. That is amazing. <laughs> this is my first room of this vault. Thank you very much, Vault Hunters. I appreciate it. How much knowledge essence do I have? 36. 36, and I barely even touched this vault yet. And you know, as good as my Poison Nova ability is, I think that it may actually be a good idea to go ahead and pick up a little bit better of attacking ability because right now Poison Nova is basically the only ability that I have for attacking enemies. And I think that maybe turning my bullet dash into a little bit of a beefier bullet dash could be a good thing. So I have two unspent skill points. I'm gonna go ahead and dump them into here, and now we're gonna be dealing 100% of our weapon damage whenever we bullet dash through enemies. So there we go. We have another way to attack enemies, and hopefully it's actually useful to us. I kinda wanna uh, pull a Hellfire Mage, if you guys know that YouTuber. He also plays Vault Hunters, and he says, uh, well, whenever you get into a situation, just bullet dash through your problems. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't agree more. I want to bullet dash through all of my problems. So let's just give it a try. Hey, I mean, that did that did pretty good. I mean, leveling up more would obviously kill those guys in one shot, but I mean, not bad, not bad. I'm happy with it. That's another way to attack. Also, can I just say that I absolutely love the look of this vault. It is just gorgeous. It's like a a Candyland theme or something. I don't know. I really like it. All right, you guys, you guys gotta go. You guys are being very annoying. <laughs> go away. Anyway, yeah, this Candyland looking theme. It is very, I don't know, very cool looking. I like it. I mean, it's not my favorite. The Easter pastels is still definitely my favorite just because of the coloring that's inside of that vault. But I mean, this one isn't bad. This one is not bad at all. I, I like it. Oh, baby, more living POIs. Yes, indeed. Oh, hi there. <laughs> you guys snuck up on me. Hello. All right. Yes. More living chests. All of the knowledge. Woo. So I got three minutes left and I'm basically looking for one more living POI and then I should have enough essence in order to make our last knowledge star that we need. So I'm just gonna run around some of these rooms, hope to find a set of living chests. And if not, I guess we're just gonna head out and hope that we have enough. I think that we're 
probably going to be a little bit short if that's the case, though, because I have 68 Knowledge Essence, and I need, I think it's 72 for another Knowledge Star, so I would be a little bit short. I'm not sure if I have any... Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I was going to say I'm not sure if I have any back at the base, but with this living POI right here, we should get enough Knowledge Essence in order to make the last Knowledge Star that we need. Nice. I say that. <laughs> I'm only at 69 Knowledge Essence. I need 72. Okay, I still need another. Another living POI. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought I was going to get lucky there and get enough that I wouldn't have to keep searching, but... With well, a minute and 30 left, I really got to get out of here. So let me find the way up and let's just jet. Oh man, I may be cutting this close. <laughs> I only have 30 seconds left. Okay, no, we're good. Okay, I thought I had one more room to go before I hit the portal room, but no, we're good. We are good. Oh man, that was, that was kind of a crazy vault to be honest with you. 69 knowledge essence though, I will take it. Oh, all right. Let's go ahead and let's get out of here. <laughs> 11,000 experience. 4,000 of that comes from chest. 900 comes from mine blocks. 1,680 comes from mobs. And then 5,000 from the objective. That will bring us up to level 24. All right, Crate. I'm going to have to come back and get you here in just a second because... Uh, Everything is absolutely chock full once again. Uh, let's see, is there anything special here that I wanted to show you guys first? I don't think so. I think most of this is just our standard stuff for the most part. So we'll go ahead and get all of that in there. And now let's go back and pick up my crate because <laughs> I, I always have to leave it because my inventory is just so full. As for my pouches, not too terribly bad. Main objective was the knowledge essence and I think we did pretty good in that regard. 128 raw carbon and plus I think I already added some in there as well. But let's go ahead and add all of this stuff into our storage here. And then I'll also go and put some things away that I know we're going to uh, need later. Oh, I am, I am out of room. We're gonna have to put our jewels here for now. 11 wooden, not bad, horrible, uh, decent, pretty good, horrible. And hey, a 29, 1.5 copiously. That one is really good. Probably something I want to add to this guy because that is a small enough size that I think it is worth it. All right, let's go ahead and add our bounty pearl to the bounty table. Still have not completed either one of those quests, but I do have an item submission. Vault apples. Oh yeah, I could definitely do that one. I can definitely do that one, but I need to clear out one of these first. And as for my other pouch, just your standard stuff. Nothing amazing other than a decent amount of coins from that vault. Not too bad. Also our mystery boxes as always, which we will go ahead and open up here in just a second. But we'll go ahead and throw all of this stuff in place first. Go ahead and put all of that in, all of that in. And now we just need to roll our relics and our mystery boxes. Five mystery boxes gives emeralds and diamonds, nothing special, and our relics. Oh, we got a duplicate, but then we also got a piece of the miner set, I believe. This should be, yeah, the pickaxe handle. Nice. And time to bust open our monolith crate and see what we get. Looks like we're gonna get some money. We're gonna get some chest plates. We're gonna get a new sword as well as some type of chipped jewel there. Uh, yep, we got coin affinity, we got ornate affinity, we got vault diamonds, and we got ourselves an orb of regret, vanilla immortality, and then two chest plates and a sword, and three relic booster packs that have nothing for us but disappointment. <laughs> All right, let's see if we get anything good out of this. Probably not, but let's give it a look over anyway. Ooh, hey yo, that is an epic chest plate. That is really good, but what does our stats look like on it? Um, you know, it's not too bad. 
Not too bad. It definitely probably needs a reroll. The 13% increased damage, probably not amazing. Uh, plus 16 mana, not amazing. Plus 7% healing efficiency, not amazing. But if we can reroll those prefixes and get either a health or an armor roll and some suffixes, ooh, that could be good, boys. That could be good. As for the sword, uh, let's see, 13 and a half. Let's just hold the sword. Let's see. Uh, let's see what this guy is. Um, yeah, no. And then this chest plate, no. Okay, so these two can be thrown into the vault recycler. And let's go ahead and let's re-roll this chest plate. And let's just see real quick if we can get anything good. Healing efficiency, resistance, mana, no. Uh, hey, that's not bad. We got a armor roll and a health roll and an item rarity roll and a resistance roll and a little bit of thorns chance. That, that I think is a upgrade. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna lose some health, but we're gonna gain some armor, so... I think that's probably worth it. How much health are we actually going to lose here? So we're going to go from, what is that? That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half hearts on the second row. And we're going to drop down to just four. I mean, I think that's worth it to go from, what, 35 to 39 armor. I think that's probably worth it. I do. So we will move this over into our backup gear. And then we will just destroy this one. That is quite the upgrade, if I do say so myself. I will take that. Let's go and grab some emeralds out and get it enchanted up. And just checking the black market over here, and it actually looks like we have some pretty good buys. First off, we have an inscription, which I believe these things are pretty rare to get. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that guy up. It has instability of... 0.3% and time of 39, completion of 6%. I'm not entirely sure what these do. I'll have to look it up in just a minute, but I'm fairly certain those are pretty rare and you want to pick them up whenever they come up in the black market. And then I also got a mod box, which I'm going to hold on to until we unlock create, which we might as well go ahead and do right now. <laughs> because I do have enough knowledge essence to do so. So we can go ahead and make ourselves all of the knowledge shards that we need. And then we can go ahead and get our Benny boys out. Ooh, we're going to have to fortune some up. Which, by the way, some of you guys have been saying that fortune is broken in this version of Vault Hunters. And I've heard this rumor before, and I've seen it disproven before. So I just want to go ahead and test once again, make sure that this is still just a rumor and not correct. So the idea that people say is that the whenever you vein mine with fortune, it only rolls fortune once per the block that you break and then applies it to all of the blocks here. I don't think that's correct. I think that fortune is applied to all of the blocks. So we have 10 Biniotite here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to vein mine fortune these guys. And I have no Benny boys in my inventory and I got 26 gems. So that would mean out of 10, we got 26. That is not an even number. That is not a perfectly even number. So I don't think that that is correct. For instance, if we had rolled a two and we got 10 gems right there, we had 10 ores laid out and we rolled a, ten, a two, we should have gotten 20 gems perfectly. If we had 10 gems there, if we had 10 stone, uh, Beniatite ore there, and then we rolled a three with our fortune, we would have gotten 30. In this case, we got 26. So I do not believe that what people are saying is correct. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So let's go ahead and Bane mine fortune once again. And we had 26. Now let, you know what? Let's actually just put the 26 up. That way it's, it's even easier. So the 26 is put away. Let's pick all of this up. That time we got a perfect 20. So I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and do it again with another. Oh, uh, hold on. <laughs> We're going to break that one. Uh, there we go. And once again, we have another perfect 10. We're going to vein mine fortune. There we go. And we got 25. So if we had rolled a two, 
that would not that that doesn't make sense so no it is rolling per block based off of my understanding of how fortune works at least anyway here is our knowledge core and now we just need to get back out our knowledge shards like so and this should be our last knowledge star that we need all six knowledge stars oh i love that sound baby that is the sound of education <laughs> it is time to unlock create and now what's the first thing that we're gonna set up <laughs> i don't know i didn't think i was gonna get this far <laughs> i've been running so many vaults that uh well i haven't really planned this out i guess i can start by rolling this mod box what do we get oh well that that didn't help that's just a storage upgrade <laughs> which you know actually I'm gonna add to uh to this drawer right here because I'm constantly overfilling my bronze so yeah sure that seems like a good place for that <laughs> all right create I need a plan so it's been about a year since I last used the create mod and I really needed a refresher. So I went onto YouTube and I started watching DeJojo the Awesome who's also playing through Vault Hunters in order to get a basic refresher of what the create mod is. In the meantime, I did some mining as well as ran another vault in which I completed two bounties as well as an elixir vault. Nice and check out that knowledge essence all out of one vault, 102. That's nuts. <laughs> that was an insane vault. Just a ton of living POIs. That was, yeah, that was crazy. Sadly, not that much ore though, but 159 chests looted with 31 of them being living. That was just really good. 108 wooden, 17 ornate and three gilded. Yeah, this was this was just a crazy good vault. But I've also been doing a little bit of building. Well, not real building, but more like clearing out an area for future farms, gizmos, and gadgets that we can make with Create. So I dug out a huge room here in the mountain for us to work in. It's not done yet, so don't judge me. Oh, and I just made this chromatic iron sledgehammer, but uh, <laughs> I made a little bit of a mistake. As you can see, I used all of my hammering on this hammer as well as I got axing and shoveling on it. But uh, d do you realize the mistake that I made um, here? Just just as a little bit of a. <laughs> I forgot picking. I forgot picking. So it's great for removing large areas, but it it's not as fast as it could be. I'm a bit of a nub scrub. Oh, and with that last vault, I also got an expertise point because we hit level 25. So I do actually want to throw that expertise point into our last level of fortunate, which will give us fortune five, which we are definitely going to need here in just a second because, well, we're gonna need some pogs for create. Speaking of create, I say that we just go ahead and get into it. My goal for today is to get a windmill set up and this is not going to be a cheap thing by any means. We are going to need a pog. We are going to need some black chromatic steel ingots. We're gonna need some vault stone. We're gonna need some vault diamonds as well as a shaft. Now I believe for the shaft, we need andesite alloy, some chromatic iron, and more andesite alloy. But this stuff is craftable, so that shouldn't be too bad. The black chromatic steel ingots, though, yeah, that's going to take some black opals, which I don't think I have that much of. Black opal, yeah, I got nine ore and then one black opal. <laughs> so we are going to have to fortune and hope that we get lucky. So nine black opal and... That actually looked like a good drop. <laughs> Let's see. 22. Oh, that ought to do for a little while at least. So here is our two black chromatic steel ingots. <laughs> that is so expensive, dude. And then for my pog, I am missing two ores. I am missing pizza night and ashium. So let's hope that we get good rolls once again. Hey, that's six, that will do. And then pizza night, 12. 12 i will you know what i will take that i think that is enough for several pogs actually although if i'm gonna make more than one pog i'm gonna need some more of these guys come on tubby boys oh one 
<laughs> oh, that's not good. But hey, I do have enough ore that I can technically make two pogs. So I say we do that. And there we go. One pog, two pogs. Nice. All right. Now, what else do we need for the windmill? All right. Got myself some shafts, which was a very easy craft. And now I think I just need some polished vault stone. And that should theoretically be everything that we need for this windmill. I hope at least. Do I have everything? There we go. The windmill bearing. <laughs> that is absolutely huge. Now I just need some sails for it. Oh, and I think I also need glue in order to glue all the sails together. So yeah, how much is this stuff? It looks like we need slime balls. Okay, that shouldn't be too bad to get. An iron nugget and an iron plate, which is going to require a mechanical press. Okay, that's going to require a shaft, a andesite casing, and a block of iron. Okay, none of those are too hard. The andesite casing is a block of chromatic iron. That is, boy, that's expensive. And then some andesite alloy just right clicked onto it. Okay, so yikes, that's expensive. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's let's go for the glue. <laughs> let's go for the glue for right now. All right. Some chromatic iron blocks and just right clicking it with some andesite alloy. And there we go. We have ourselves some andesite casings. That was that was a lot of chromatic iron. <laughs> I am not a fan of that, but we should be able to make the mechanical press now. So Let's go ahead and check this out. We need andesite casing, we need shafts, and just an iron block. So as long as I have enough iron, which I should, because I just went mining, let's go ahead and do this iron block and then the mechanical press. Nice, that is that done. And now I guess I just need a depot and a hand crank, I guess. So a depot, which is an andesite casing and a andesite alloy, and then we need a hand crank, which I don't know where that's at. There it is, okay. So we need some driftwood, a chromatic iron ingot, and some andesite alloy. So just a couple pieces of driftwood. There we go. And now we should be able to make that hand crank. Okay, perfect. So this should be able to get us started at least. So go ahead and set down our depot and then we'll set our mechanical press up. I think it has to be one block above this. So uh, there, and then mechanical press there. Go ahead and remove that. And now we'll do our hand crank here. And I think I just need to put the iron like on the depot and then spinny spin. Bonk! <laughs> nice, and that gives us one iron plate. Nice, nice. Okay, so now we should be able to do our super glue. So super glue. Here we go. Nice. And now we just need our sails. I mean, it's a good thing I've been breeding these guys up though. 126 sheep. Give me the wool. Oh yeah, that'll definitely do. And now to craft up a stack of sails. Although looks like I'm going to get two stacks out of this. Nice. And that should be plenty for our windmill bearing. Now, where am I going to put this thing? I guess just right up there will be fine oh but you got to get out of the way mr creeper <laughs> yeah can't have you you would be a huge interruption <gasps> oh my paxel died okay looks like i'm using my chromatic steel paxel now <laughs> okay so for this windmill bearing i think i just need to place this thing down like so place a spruce log on it and then it should just be a matter of adding the sails however <laughs> positioning these might be a problem. Oh, there we go. No, that's working. That's working. Okay, and now we'll do like that. Oh yeah, that's working. Now I wonder how many sails I can actually put here before it <laughs> before it becomes an issue. I have no idea, but let's just go ahead and right click. Nice. <laughs> well, that is it working. Now I can't actually see how many stress units this thing is producing because I don't have any goggles. So 
I guess I should make that next. And what we need is the engineer's goggles. These don't look to be too bad. Looks like we just need a gold plate as well as some glass and some string. I think that's definitely doable. Let's go ahead and grab out some gold and we will have to come over here to our handy dandy mechanical press again and just give this guy a spin, bonk again. And there we go. We got ourselves a gold sheet and the rest of this should be fairly simple. So we just need some glass and some string. That should be it. So let's go ahead and make ourselves some engineer's goggles. Nice. And now I should be able to put these in my, I think it goes in my head slot here. Yes. <laughs> How are we looking? Weird. Definitely weird. <laughs> All right. I don't care though. That's fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at our windmill and see how many stress units we're producing. 1,024 stress units. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Okay. Uh, I wonder how many more of these sails we can add though. I do wonder. Let's go ahead and check the windmill. And let's see, if we go ahead and we just ponder here, does it tell me how many sails it can have before it's a problem? <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, also, this says that we needed super glue, but I don't think we did because we connected the sails directly to the, um, the spruce block here. I think if we had used trap doors like they're showing here, then it would be a problem. But how we did it here, I think we're good. Um, yeah, but it doesn't tell me how many sales. Well, thanks, I guess. <laughs> that was useless. I guess I can just keep adding sales until I hit the 8,192 stress units that's its max. Yeah, that'll do. Well, I think I can tell you exactly how many sails it's going to take in order to get the max power out of a windmill. <laughs> it is exactly two stacks worth of sails. <laughs> Oddly convenient that that's what it is, but there we go. That is our full powered windmill with 8,192 stress units for us to use, which is a lot of stress units. I think we'll be good for at least a little while. However, something I didn't plan on is I actually don't know where this is going to end up down in the room below. <laughs> this may actually end up being a problem. Well, this could be a problem. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure where this is though. I think this may be on the back side of my room. Like I think my room may be in this direction. I have no idea though. <laughs> this is pure guesswork. Oh, I'm at Y level 85. I am way too far down. <laughs> I must have missed my room completely. Okay, so I'm on level 101 now. So theoretically, oh, <laughs> yep, just barely missed the room. <laughs> okay, so that is where our windmill comes down at. Now we just need to get it to where we can move that stress units all around this room. And we probably want it to go a little bit faster too. So probably a speed controller? Yeah, this thing, the rotational speed controller. Okay, it is a little expensive with a pog right off the bat. What is this brass casing? How hard are you to make? We need a full block of brass, goodness. And then a full block of chromatic iron. How hard is it to get brass? We need brass ingots, which is made from, let me guess. Yep, mixing zinc and copper, as well as we need a heater and the mixer. And oh, oh, oh boy, that's gonna get expensive quick. How much is this? We need a whisk, andesite casing, cog wheel. How much is the whisk? Some iron plates, some andesite alloy. Ooh, baby, that's gonna get... That's gonna be expensive quickly. And then this thing, oh, this thing needs stuff too. It needs a gold plate. Repeat the sequence five times of adding a cogwheel, a large cogwheel, and then an 
iron nugget. Oh, dude, this thing's gonna be. <laughs> oh, okay. I wanna make one though. Maybe we just focus on doing the brass casing for right now. All right, so to get the mixer set up, we're going to need a blaze burner. And a blaze burner is gotten by capturing a blaze in an empty blaze burner. So this thing, okay, some chromatic steel ingots, not too cheap, but not too bad right now. And then we also need some iron sheets and a polished vault stone. That's actually doable, I think. All right, so there is an empty blaze burner. Now I need to go and capture a blaze. So get some firework rockets and let's head into the nether. Hello there, blazy boys. Nice, gotcha. <laughs> oh no, I can't make it down the stairs. <laughs> oh man, panic set in there. All right, let's go ahead and let's head out of here. And let's see if we can get this mixer set up. Alrighty, and for this mechanical mixer, I think I have everything already. I have the whisk, I have the andesite casing. I'm just missing the cog wheel, it looks like. Okay, Laramar and a shaft, not too terribly bad. Go ahead and make that. That was pretty easy. By the way, in case you guys are wondering, the whisk recipe is not horrible. Just some andesite casings and some iron plates, so. Not too terrible to do that. Now, I think we need a mixing basin. Um, maybe not, I don't remember what it's called. I thought it was called a basin. Basin, yeah, there we go, a basin. So we need some andesite alloy and a perfect Laramar. Okay, perfect Laramar and some andesite alloy, which I already have. And there we go. I think that is everything that we need other than some coal. We need a little bit of coal to field, to not field, to feed our blaze boy. Let's go ahead and head down here and let's give this guy some juice. <laughs> and let's hope that this mixer actually works. Oh, I bet you I have to, I bet you I'm gonna have to provide some spinny spin to this thing though, right? Probably so. Let's do basin. Yes, okay. And then let's do the mixer. I think once again, we need a one block gap. So let's just use this to stack up. That's fine. Up and then mechanical mixer goes here. There we go. Remove all of that stuff. Uh, can I have my, oh, I want my casing back, please. Can I, can I have my, there we go. Okay. So now I think I just need to feed this guy. And yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to provide some spinny spin here, I think. And it doesn't look like it has a port for a hand crank on it, unless it's up at the top. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it may actually just be easier to, to pipe this in for now. All right, and just as an extremely temporary setup, I have set this up to our windmill so we don't have to hand crank this. And we're gonna add in some copper and then add in some zinc. I think I just need to feed this boy underneath with some coal. Yes, it's mixing. <laughs> nice. And we should get some copper or not copper brass as an output, I believe. I don't know how long this actually takes, if it's going to do it all in one big batch or one at a time. I have no clue. <laughs> it seems like it's spinning for quite a long time, though. You want to uh, you, you, you want to you want to finish up? It's gotta be doing more than just one, right? This has been spinning for a long time. I like how the particles are changing though. Check that out. You can actually see the brass forming in there. That is too cool, dude. That is too, too cool. <laughs> oh, I love Create. I haven't used this mod in so long. And to be honest, even the last time that I used it, I wasn't particularly good at it and I didn't get very far. But I gotta say, so far, I'm a fan. I can sit here and just watch these particles all day, to be honest. Oh! Oh, my blaze burner ran out of fuel. That's okay. Oh, I got 50 brass ingots. Oh, baby, that... <laughs> that works. All right, so chromatic iron with a brass block. There we go. That is our brass casing done. And now 
for the speed controller. What else are we missing? I think we're just missing this precision matrix or not matrix, precision mechanism, which <laughs> yeah, that could be a problem. And then is there anything else we're missing? We should have vault essence and we should have a pog. I think it's just this thing. Although for that, we do need deployers, which we haven't made any of. So I guess let's check that thing out. How hard is it? We need a brass hand, which means brass sheets and andesite alloy. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Andesite casing and then an electron tube. Oh boy, uh, polished rose quartz, redstone torch, that's easy. Chromatic iron, okay, what is this? This is sandpaper and rose quartz. How do I get rose quartz? Redstone and nether quartz. Actually, I think I can do this. I think I can do this. This isn't too hard. Alrighty, so with sandpaper in my off hands and rose quartz in my other hand, we can just go ahead Nice, pink diamonds. <laughs> I don't know about diamonds, but it is kind of cool. And we get ourselves some polished rose quartz. However, this sandpaper does not last very long at all. So I guess we might as well just go ahead and do all eight. <laughs> That's fine. And then we need the uh, electron tube, I believe. Yeah, so we need some redstone torches and some chromatic iron nuggets. That shouldn't be too bad. I have redstone torches, and then I think I have some chromatic iron nuggets. I do not. Okay, let's just go ahead and make, I don't know, a few of these. Go ahead and do that. Uh, that's fine. Put that back in. And now an electron tube. Let's go ahead and make yeah, let's make four of these guys. That's fine, because I'm going to make four deployers here. So go ahead and do deployer here. Boom. Four deployers. Nice. Now, I don't know that I can make this precision mechanism this way, but I'm going to give it a try with three deployers hooked up and me just manually moving the items back and forth five times. So we're going to give it a try at least, and I'm going to use some gearboxes here just to get this rotational force moving in the correct direction. And then I'm going to connect up with a belt from here to here. And there we go. All of them are now moving. <laughs> okay, now let's see if I set a, I think I need a chest on these guys in order for them to pull from. And I think I just then add a cogwheel, I guess. And is this thing going to pull a cog wheel and place it? Honestly, I can't tell if it's using one or not. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so I think I just right click on the bottom of the deployer with the items that I want to have it placed. So that should be small cog wheels. This should be large cog wheels, and then this should be iron nuggets. And now I'm gonna take this gold sheet and, okay, interesting. Now this, okay, now this. And I just need to keep repeating this. Boom, boom. Oh, baby, we're creating. We're totally creating. This mod is so cool, dude. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Yes. One more time. Bonk it. Bonk it again. And that should be our precision mechanism now done. And I think that means we can make that speed controller that I wanted. <laughs> it's expensive but I think it's totally worth it. Uh-oh, uh, there was pillagers in my base and I forgot I had villagers out. Um, uh-oh, <laughs> this, this may go terribly. I have no idea where the, where the raid spawned either. Uh, dude, I'm just trying to get my video out for today. Why, why a raid? Of all things, why this? Anyway, now that that raid is over with and I died many, many times, <laughs> stupid Ravengers. Anyway, we now have what we need for the rotational speed controller. And this thing is 
Well, it's like the best thing ever. Okay, so in order to show how good the rotational speed controller is, I have a simple setup here with just a single gear that is rotating around. And as you can see, it's going decently fast. You know, it's got 16 RPM going, but if we go ahead and set up our rotational speed controller, you can see with that gear on top of it, it's now getting some motion. Let's go ahead and set another gear right here. And as you can see, 16 RPM, nothing special. It is going just fine. However, we can go faster. With this speed controller, what we can do is we can just scroll up right here, all the way up to 256. As you can see, <laughs> gear goes burr. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing and allows us if we put it at the very start of our windmill power to control how fast our different machines go now obviously we don't want to keep it all the way up at 256 because first off that's a little bit fast but also the more that we have the speed increase the more power is going to be used from our windmill so while it's a great way to increase the speed of all of our machinery it also is going to cost more stress units to run that machinery while using this to increase the speed but honestly i'm good with that trade-off because some of these machines take forever to do their job but you know what with that I think that's going to be where I wrap up for today. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this dive into Create. Obviously, we are just getting started and we have not even hardly scratched the surface with this mod, but I do hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video as well as if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Vault Hunters and I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a great day. Oh, I hear you, Mr. Zombie. You're underneath there gurgling at me. <laughs> oh, man.